This is a short lecture about radiation protection in medicine, specifically fundamental principles of radiation protection. The medical use of ionizing radiation take place in various settings that includes hospitals, clinics, and in dental practice. A large hospital, for example, gives services for diagnostic radiology, image-guided procedures, nuclear medicine, and radiation therapy. The regulation for the medical use of ionizing radiation varies from state to state. Despite this, the safety guidance established by international groups, such as the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IEA, remains applicable. It provides recommendations in ensuring radiation protection and safety of patients, workers, and the general public. Let's start this lecture. We have three types of radiation exposure for this lecture. First is planned exposure situations. Second is existing exposure situations. Third, the emergency exposure situations. The first type of exposure is planned exposure situations. Uh, this is or these are situations uh, where radiological protection can be planned in advance and exposures can be reasonably predicted. Examples are working in a hospital, especially working in uh, the Department of Radiology or Nuclear Medicine, so, uh, then uh, working in a nuclear power plant facility, or just getting an x-ray procedure for the annual physical examination. The second type of exposure is existing exposure situation. These situations are that already exist when a decision on the regulation or control has to be taken. The usual example of this are those naturally occurring uh, radiation sources. It includes, let's say, an astronaut exposed to cosmic radiation and radon gases present in the Earth. The last type of exposure is emergency exposure situations. These are unexpected situations that may require urgent protective actions. Examples are major radiation and nuclear accidents, such as a nuclear power plant meltdown accident. We can also define three categories of exposure. We have occupational exposure, medical exposure, and public exposure. First, the occupational exposure uh, for those involved in the performance of radiological procedures. The second, medical exposure, is primarily for the patients undergoing the radiological procedures, but also for carers and comforters and for volunteers subject to exposure as part of a program of medical research. Last, we have public exposure, and this is for the members of the public, such as those people in the waiting room. The requirements for radiation protection and safety differ according to the category of exposure. I will define the following for this short lecture. First, carers and comforters. Uh, these are persons who willingly and voluntarily help a patient during radiological procedures for medical purposes. Second is the term practice, and this is the use of radiation to expose a person deliberately, such as the medical use of radiation. We have the three general or fundamental principles of radiation protection. Namely, first, justification, second, optimization of protection and safety, third, and the last, the application of those limits. This is set by the International Commission on Radiological Protection. These uh, three principles are applicable for both occupational and public exposure, while the third one, the dose limit, does not apply to medical exposure. The justification of a medical practice will provide exposure to radiation with sufficient benefit 
to the uh, exposed individuals or to society and it outweighs the possible radiation detriments. So the benefit should outweigh the possible detriment. For medical exposure, the diagnostic or therapeutic benefits outweighs the radiation detriment. It might cause taking into account uh, the available alternative procedures without using radiation. Uh, that includes the use of ultrasound and MRI. It includes a referral from a referring physician, uh, let's say a nuclear medicine physician, radiologist, and a radiation oncologist to justify the procedure. In medical exposure, the justification principle requires using three-level approach. The first one, the use of radiation in medicine does more good or benefit than harm, and we have defined this earlier. The next level, a generic justification of a radiological procedure should be carried out by the health authority in conjunction with certain appropriate professional bodies. This includes the justification of the use of current technologies and techniques as they evolve. The last level is the application of radiological procedure to an individual, the specific objectives, clinical situation, and the characteristic of individuals should be considered. The third level uh, justification of medical exposure for an individual patient does not include considerations of occupational exposures. Okay, now let's go to the second fundamental principle of radiation protection and safety, which is optimization uh, for its application to occupational exposure and the public exposure, we ensure to provide the best available protection and safety measures given the circumstances to meet the magnitude and likelihood of exposures and number of exposed people as low as reasonably achievable. So we, we, we follow the certain ALARA principle. Of course, taking into account uh, the economic and the social factors. For medical exposure, so medical exposure, we keep the exposure of the patients to the minimum necessary to achieve the required diagnostic or interventional objective. In therapy, uh, the medical exposure, we keep the exposure of the normal tissues, so normal tissues, as low as reasonably achievable, making sure that we still deliver the required dose to the planning target volume or PTB. So again, this is for the therapy part. Under optimization, we have this dose constraints. These are used in planning stage and the optimization of protection and safety. Those constraints are applicable for occupational and the exposure of the public in medical uses of ionizing radiation. Those constraints are not those limits. Exceeding a dose constraint does not represent a non-compliance to the regulation, but it might result in follow-up action or investigation. Next, uh, still under optimization, we have the DRLs or Diagnostic Reference Level. This is a level used in medical imaging to indicate whether in routine condition, the dose of the patient or the amount of the radioform administered in a specified radiological procedure is unusually high or unusually low for that procedure or for that specific procedure. DRLs are a practical tool to promote optimization. Uh, this were first uh, successfully implemented in relation to conventional radiography in the year 1980s. It is important to recognize that DRLs are one of the steps in the overall process of optimization. And uh, we do not apply directly this one to individual patients and examination, but 
a local review may be done based on the DRLs established. Note that uh, DRLs is not the same as your those limits. The last fundamental principles of uh, radiation protection is those limit. Doses to individuals are limited for occupational exposure and the public exposure. Those limits do not apply to medical uh, exposure and this is important to remember. Uh, that includes uh, the exposure of patients, carers, or comforters, and volunteers as part of a certain biomedical research. And this is due to the fact that in medical exposure, we aim for a certain clinical objective, or we want to, ach to achieve this one. These are the dose limits recommended by the ICRP Publication 103. And uh, stated here are the type of dose limits in terms of effective dose, millisieverts, and equivalent dose still in millisieverts uh, for both occupational exposure and the public exposure. Note that when we say effective dose, uh, this is uh, calculated for the whole body. And it is the addition of equivalent doses to all organs, each adjusted to account for the sensitivity of the organ to radiation. And for the equivalent dose, uh, this is calculated for individual organs. Uh, it is based on the absorbed dose uh, and the type of radiation. Limits on effective dose combined with the optimization of, of protection are designed to avoid the risk of stochastic effect. So, stochastic effect that would be considered intolerable in a planned exposure situation. Limits on equivalent dose uh, to an organ, uh, we have here for the eye, for the skin, and the hands and the feet, uh, it com uh, combined with optimization of protection are designed to prevent the occurrence of deterministic effect. Deterministic effect. Now, let us check the limits. First, uh, for the effective dose uh, under the occupation exposure, it's 20 millisieverts for, uh, per year, average over a defined period of 5 years, with no single year exceeding 50 millisieverts. Uh, then, for the public exposure for the effective dose, it's 1 millisievert in a year. Note that for the occupation exposure, uh, if the worker declares pregnancy, the dose to the embryo or fetus, fetus should not exceed about 1 millisievert during the remainder of the pregnancy. Next, uh, we have the equivalent dose for the lens of the eye. Before, we have 150 millisieverts for the occupation exposure, but now we have 20 millisieverts per year, average over a defined period of 5 years, with no single year exceeding 50 millisieverts. It's uh, the same with the effective dose uh, above. Then for the public exposure, still uh, we have 15 millisieverts in a year. Next, uh, the equivalent dose uh, to the skin, and the skin here uh, is average over 1 square centimeter of skin regardless of the area exposed. And for the occupation exposure, the dose limit is 500 millisieverts uh, in a year. Then for the public exposure, we have 50 millisieverts in a year. Last is the equivalent dose to the hands and feet. Uh, we have 500 millisieverts in a year for occupation exposure. Then we have none uh, for the public exposure. So that's it for this lecture. Hey guys, if you like this video, please subscribe JP Academia. Thank you.